Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one of a series of videos describing how to use technological tools in the classroom. In this video, I will provide a brief overview of Dropbox, a website that millions of people use every day to store and backup files online. Within this video, I will provide you an overview of the free service, some specific ways that we will use it in class this year, advantages of Dropbox over similar services, how to sign up, and ways to maximize what you get for free. Dropbox is a free cloud storage service. What this means is that all the information that you would typically store on your computer's hard drive is stored online, in the cloud. In addition to storing information on the cloud, Dropbox is a tool that can also synchronize data from one device to another. As the picture on this slide shows, you can keep in sync your Windows phone or your iPhone with your Linux or Mac or Windows computer. Any piece of information that I have stored on my computer at home, I could immediately pull up on my iPad if I were interested, even though I don't have that document stored on my iPad's hard drive. On the next few slides, what I'll do is go through some specific uses for Dropbox. The first one of these is to back up your files. Nothing beats having physical backups of your hard drives that are kept in a separate, safe location. The problem is that most people don't do that. They don't back up their files at all or often enough. While the cartoon below might make light of the situation, horrible things can happen to your electronic devices. Your home might start on fire and destroy your computer and your backup if you even bother to make one. Your computer might die and even if you can recover any data from that computer, it might end up costing you hundreds of dollars. Dropbox automatically backs up your files when you save them to your computer in a different location. The great news is that you don't have to remember to do anything at all. It does it in the background uh, without any thought on your behalf. Another use for Dropbox is keeping your files in sync. I personally have a computer at home, a computer at work, and a tablet that I use every single day. I don't want to have to lug my work computer home to finish things, and I'd rather not worry about saving something to a flash drive because that's pretty inconvenient. If I get stuck in jury duty or waiting at the DMV for 45 minutes to get my driver's license renewed, I'd love to be able to finish up a paper that I'm working on uh, so I don't have to worry about it later. When you use Dropbox, almost the second that you hit the save button on your computer, all those files are updated in the cloud, as shown in the picture provided here. With Dropbox, you don't need to bother bringing your work computer home, because the file that you just saved at work is sitting at home waiting for you. You can make use of those otherwise wasted minutes at the DMV. Within a few taps, I can pull up the documents that I'm interested in on my tablet, so I can try to type on it. Dropbox can also be used as a wonderful tool to collaborate with others. My wife and I keep everything from our budget to our grocery list on Dropbox. If I decided that I wanted to add a 12-pack of Diet Dr. Pepper to my grocery list, we'd both have it on our grocery list by the time that we go shopping next. I've also shared information with coworkers this way. As shown in the picture provided above, you can share folders with others, or you can even share links to folders with others. You can use this as a means to send other people information or to work collaboratively on the same files, as you would during group work. You don't need to be in the same room or even the same state to work collaboratively in this way. The great news is this is not an all or nothing deal. You can share specific folders and allow even read-only privileges to others, where they can only look at your files and not edit them. In the past, when students have missed a lot of school, I've allowed them read-only privileges so that they can download notes or labs that they might be interested in making up while they're gone. Dropbox is certainly not the only free cloud storage service available. As the graphic here shows, there are many, many available options. On the next few slides, I will describe some of the reasons that I would recommend using Dropbox over all of the alternatives. The first reason I'd recommend using Dropbox as opposed to its competitors is that it's so easy to use. You sign up, you download a program, which I'll talk about later, and on my Mac, I can save everything in a Dropbox folder that's in my Finder as opposed to the Documents folder. If I didn't appreciate how much time, effort, and trouble that Dropbox saves me, I might completely forget that it's there. Another reason that I'd recommend Dropbox as opposed to its competitors is that it's very, very popular. Popularity in the case of Dropbox, at least in my opinion, is a major advantage. Dropbox works on every device operating system that's out there to my knowledge. In addition, there are a tremendous number of apps that have been developed to work with Dropbox. Uh, there are a dozen apps that I use personally uh, that work well with Dropbox. If you've decided you want to sign up for Dropbox, I'll explain how you can do it on the next few slides. 
First, go to the website that's listed on the bottom right corner of this slide. It is case sensitive, so be sure to use a capital D and a capital K. Once you've arrived at the website, designate that you're a new user and fill out all the information on this page to create an account. Pause this video whenever you like so that you can go back and forth between this tab and another and sign up for Dropbox as you go. After you've completed this step, you'll be asked to pick a plan. I've only used the free plan, as you can actually get a ton of space for free. Dropbox will then run you through a few more important steps, which I'll highlight next. After you finish signing up for Dropbox, it'll provide you with a lot of options and tutorials to make your life a little bit easier. You can look at those all you like, but there's one that's very, very important, and that is downloading Dropbox onto your personal computers. Using Dropbox through the website itself works reasonably well, and it'll allow you to access files on any computer that's connected to the internet. The Dropbox website itself is really useful if you're using somebody else's computer or if you're using a school computer, as you can log in and out of it very easily. It's not until you download Dropbox onto your computer that Dropbox becomes such an amazing tool to keep things in sync and to back up your files. Once you've set up your Dropbox account, you can move all your files to your Dropbox folder and use it to back up your files as I described earlier. One of the things that can be a little bit challenging to do, however, is share information uh, with others using Dropbox. There are two different ways that you can share information that will be described in the next two slides. The first one that we'll talk about in this slide is sharing information using links. You can share information using links in either your Dropbox folder or using the Dropbox website. For this demonstration, I'll show you how to do it from your Dropbox folder since that's what I access more frequently. All you need to do is right-click a file or a folder that's located in your Dropbox folder and then select the option Share Dropbox Link. Anyone that you share this link with will be able to look at your files or look at your folder, but they will not be able to edit that information. If you would like others to be able to edit information located within a Dropbox folder, a better option is to go to the Dropbox website to right-click on a folder that you want to share with others and click Invite to Folder, as shown here. One thing worth noting is that if someone else that is invited to your folder opts to delete information within that folder, it can disappear forever. There is a time period in which you can go back and recover this information, but it doesn't always work. When you sign up for Dropbox, you're given two free gigabytes of space. Well, two gigabytes is a reasonable amount of space if you're just storing PowerPoint, Word, or Excel files. Uh, it seems pretty small if you're storing videos, songs, or pictures. As of today, I have 19.38 gigabytes of free space on my Dropbox account because of bonus space that I've earned. The picture provided on this slide highlights some of the different ways that you can earn bonus space. You can pick and choose whatever you like. If you really want to earn more space and you're willing to spend some time, referring others to Dropbox can earn you even more space. I've referred dozens of people to Dropbox because of how useful I found it to be and each person that signed up using my link that I provided on a previous slide has earned me 500 megabytes of space apiece. If you can't find a way to earn enough free space to store all of your stuff, you can always purchase one of the plans that Dropbox offers. Thank you for watching this video outlining how to most effectively use Dropbox to keep your files in sync. If you're interested in learning about how to use other technological tools for the classroom or any other biology concepts, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.